Hominya. Hominya essentially means luck, and that's the most common translation. I did watch one video for the research on this, um, I like to do a little bit of a refresher, that pronounced it Hominja. I won't say who they are or anything, but don't be that guy, you know? <laughs> like, don't make a video you don't know how, how to pronounce the damn word. Just remember the, the J in Germanic and Nordic languages is pronounced like a Y, similar to how in like Spanish it's an H. Humming yaw. It's commonly associated with almost like a karma. There was one guy that was stating that if you had good Hamingya, you'd be able to throw a dart better. <laughs> nah, nah, man. That's not, that's not how life works. <laughs> if you're gonna dart, you'd be able to throw a dart better. That's how that works. It's more like the circumstance of your birth or the benefit of the people that you hang out with. Your kindred, for example, can be strong connection, obviously family, friends, especially close friends. And those people can also work to your detriment, especially if maybe you're in a smaller community, maybe people know those people. I've commonly talked about my upbringing a little bit and it hasn't been the greatest benefit, but I have benefited in some ways. Like I think I'm a better well-rounded person because I understand the ups and downs of life. And likewise with work, I'm able to find work and work for multiple companies because of the quality of my work. I'm Currently, we're actually working for a, a company that's pretty decent, and that's thanks to my effort and the people that I know. There's actually at least two people that I've worked with before. There's also two other people that have worked for me in the company, and thanks to my reputation, I now have a better job than that last one that I've ranted about in smidgens. That's, that's thanks to reputation built, uh, and part of that is, you know, I mean, you're right. That's, that's your luck. That's your circumstance. That's your, the events around you. Like it's been said that success is preparation plus circumstance. If you're well prepared and the chips line up, well, you know, there you go. One of the things that's a little bit more woo, a little bit more fluffy bunny, is namesake. Something we actually do in the Kindred is we do a name day. So far we've only had two in the approximately four plus years that we've existed my sons and William Montgomery, the first person I interviewed, Mike Andrew, his son, Bjorn. And basically what it is, is nine days after the birth, so you meet on like the ninth or 10th day, you get together, uh, it's kind of a miniature baby shower in some, in some respects. You state the name of the child. We will often take diluted mead and put it on the forehead of the infant. So you see some similarities with like a christening or whatever. And that's actually because the christening comes from paganism. Famously, the scene in Sleeping Beauty with the three fairies and bringing all the stuff to Princess uh, Aurora, I think is her name. Pretty sure. That was her name day. Usually when I explain that, I cite that movie and people go, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Like Val chose Bjorn, uh, which means bear, if you're unaware, and for his son, because he wanted that, that strong name. And I cannot remember all the kids' names because he's got like a bunch of middle names too. Because the mom's Namibian, so they wanted to throw in her culture as well. And so I like, do not remember his full name. But uh, my son's name is actually my name and almost my father's name. He's got a different middle name. His middle name is actually the Swedish side, Nelson. That's my grandmother's maiden name. But his father, my grandfather, is also Richard Allen McGee. And then his father is Richard Allen McGee. <laughs> and then his father, so my great-great-grandfather, I believe is Richard A. McGee. I'm not entirely sure on his middle name. But the name of the name day is supposed to invoke that Hamingya, that luck, especially when it's a name of an ancestor. And my great grandfather actually helped to start the penal system here in California. There's actually a facility named after him down in, I believe it's Galt, I'll throw it up on the screen. He was a pretty prominent figure back in his day. Not like a massive figure, I'm not even sure if he's got a Wikipedia, <laughs> but um, he actually had a program in place, um, and I'm going by what my family's told me here, but he's had a, a program in place that helped inmates build a trade so that they wouldn't recidivize when they got out, because it's, it's very common for criminals to go back to that criminal life, because they either 
only know that or those are their only connections. I mean, there's many factors. And I believe it was actually the unions. This is according to my, my uncle anyway. Where the unions actually protested against his reformations and got rid of that. And now California has a horrible <laughs> influx of prisoners. And they're like, not sure what to do. There's a little piece of history that maybe we should go back to. I'm just saying. But then also my grandfather, who I wish I could find some better pictures for. The last time I looked, I couldn't find any of his military pictures. But he was actually a Marine in World War II. And and uh, actually that same grandfather wasn't really around when he was a kid. I believe he actually left my great-grandmother. I'm pretty sure. And again, this is what my family's kind of trickled down so hopefully I get it right but despite that my grandfather was the quarterback of the football team you know marine MP during World War II started his own construction business came home and had some baby boomers <laughs> and then my father despite some some poor choices in his life has in a lot of ways been the the cynex for me for been that wise old teacher uh, <laughs> and I've learned a lot from him that you know obviously he's learned from his father and his father I'm very proud of who my father is and who he's become. And even since, at least since I was like 14 or so, I've been able to have like long conversations about like etymology and, and stuff like that. And, and he's a carpenter, a trade that he learned from his father. And he's damn good at what he does. And if there's anything construction related, I'm always surprised if he doesn't know. <laughs> so despite him not having the same middle name, <laughs> uh, all of that, that luck from that, that family line goes into my son in a lot of ways. And if you see, the progression of the generations. I'd say it's a pretty pretty decent name, and I hope my son embodies a lot of those characteristics. I mean, right now he seems pretty mechanically inclined, so, you know, we're, we're kind of a line of, of men who work pretty well with their hands, uh, phrasing. And that's, that's one of the things that's a little more, it's a little more woo, because it's like you're hoping that the luck of your ancestor goes into your child. But in a practical sense, the line of your family and the lessons that you've learned the epigenetics even which if you're unfamiliar with epigenetics certain genes turn off and on based on your decisions and circumstances and and all that in your life and that gets passed on to the next generation and so you see a progress of the individual and if you're curious about doing your own name day um, like i said it happens on the ninth or tenth day we uh, make a little event and we have gifts to give and we pass around the mead horn similar to a blow i started off and say you know hey we're here to honor honor this child and da, da, da. and then traditionally the mother presents the baby to the father for inspection <laughs> obviously that's uh, a little more old school we're not really actually inspecting the child modern medical technology means that the kid's not as susceptible to, to death as they used to be. And uh, a sickly infant isn't necessarily going to put the family in a bad way like it used to back in the arch-heathen times, the Viking Age and, and before. After we pass the horn, then we do the presenting, where the mother presents the baby to the father. You know, the father says some words and states the name, and then we all say, Hail baby's name. <laughs> yeah, and then that's how we welcome a child into the world and give them the Haminya of a namesake. I believe Bjorn actually has one of his grandfather's names as uh, his middle name, if I remember correctly. It doesn't have to be a paternal. It can be maternal, too. Uh, it was actually a grandfather on the Namibian side, if I remember correctly. That is the maternal line. So you can see why it's very important to build a strong kindred, a strong inner guard, a strong inner yard, a strong foundation for you and your family and even if you're single or decide not to have a child or just end up not having a kid you know you're still building that reputation for you and maybe the families that you're connected to I know lineage is kind of a huge thing in Norse paganism but no, nothing is necessary it's all it's all up to the individual I mean even this is my take on him yeah I believe Arth Harger whose video I'll put in the description below is a bit more of a a woo kind of fluffy bunny sort of take because he has uh more of a magical thinking behind his beliefs no there's anything wrong with that i'm just a little more wary of it myself which i will eventually do a video on on hyper religiosity in general so remember that you mix luck with the people you interact with especially the close ones like i have 
hired a couple of people from my kindred before because I know that they're good, hardworking people and I had the opportunity for them to provide better for themselves and obviously for their loved ones. Puerile meritocracy, stuff like that wouldn't necessarily be necessary. And I've helped people outside of my kindred as well who were just kind of down on their luck and I had some connections and knew that they were a you know decent worker or a good person. I mean, just because the circumstance of society is a certain way doesn't mean that you have to be a certain way. Like I, I try to conduct myself based on merit rather than any kind of favoritism. But the world doesn't necessarily do that. Like actually one of the companies that I have worked for that I recently had to quit, I'm not, I won't say their name, but they recently promoted somebody that like steps on people in order to get where she's at and has retaliated in the past. Like even when she was working under me and I I wrote her up multiple times. Uh, every single time, the person that she blamed for snitching on her, um, she would find something to throw them under the bus for. And the company knew that, but still promoted her. And they knew it because I told them <laughs> multiple times, in fact, including that same person actually discriminating against a transgender employee. And like, I don't give a fuck what your beliefs are. Respect is default. If you conduct yourself in that negative way, you know, negative things are going to happen. Um, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if that company keeps the contract that it has. Cause like, I just, I, I don't understand the mentality it takes to not care about people and not care like who you put in a certain position. So I quit with them. I mean, this is a smaller area too. So your reputation is so much more than it would be in like a larger, more metropolitan area. You know, who you are reflects so much on what you do. And, I mean, that's the essence of Heminia. It's it's not just the soil your roots came through. It's also the branches you extend. To use a tree analogy. <clears throat> I might be staring at a tree. And it's up to us to defy the opposition and to defy the bad luck that we have been given. It's going to sound cheesy and nerdy, but my favorite <laughs> Assassin's Creed... Assassin, and I've honestly only played through a couple of the games, but is Shea Cormac, and I know he's actually a Templar because he like defects or whatever, but when he's constantly like, I make my own luck. With a little luck, the army will crush those damn brigands. I make my own luck. With that Irish accent. I think he's the only Irish assassin we've had. You know, he, he saw something negative and he did something to fix it, and, and he's all about pulling himself up by the bootstraps, as they call it. <laughs> By the way, is really hard to do. You usually just fall on your butt. If you want good Heminia, don't be a dick. <laughs> That's my advice. One of my biggest pet peeves is terrible people being rewarded for terrible behavior. I just, I just have this like sense of justice, not even necessarily fairness, because I think different people will get different things out of life based on their merit and their qualities and their ability to to persevere. I mean, ultimately, that ability to persevere is up to us. You make your own luck. You make your own hominia. You defy terrible roots and focus on the good roots. Some of us may not have a foundation. I mean, I saw a woman today who was flying a sign. It wasn't anywhere I was guarding, but which is, as a security guard, is something that kind of irks me, because it's something I have to deal with sometimes <laughs> but she had a kid with her and like that got to me so against my usual judgment I ended up giving her uh, a little bit of money and a couple of stuffed animals I had in my car that a woman randomly gave my wife the other day <laughs> no, no loss for me really or, or my son rather um he's got enough toys I think I was talking to her and she this is her story we had and it seemed legit but I mean you never know and sometimes I'm a little too trusting but she towed her car and had to replace, she's called it a knee joint, despite being a mechanic in the Marine Corps, I know almost nothing about cars, so, thanks government. <laughs> it was like a $250 part, and she's has no ability to install it, so she's probably gonna have to find a mechanic, and, and that's gonna be crazy expensive, and because she doesn't have a vehicle, she wasn't able to, to find work, and, and looking at the kid, the kid's clothes were a little dirty, I think she might have been missing a few of the teeth on top. I hope, hopefully their circumstances change.
And I didn't pry too much. I didn't want to like ask where the dad was or anything like that. Who knows, it might have been her friend's kid that she just put there for sympathy, but regardless, I'm gonna fall to the kids. And sometimes life can deal you some pretty, some pretty shitty cards. You know, times are tough right now. I know I've been struggling for a little bit, which I've ranted about a couple times now. Things are getting a little bit better now that I've changed companies yet again. It's easy to look down on somebody for the bad circumstances that they're in when you don't know their story. And I've talked a little bit about like dealing with the homeless, which is a large part of security, especially in this area. You have to kind of pull yourself back and realize that they're human and that their anemia is not always great in the beginning. That they may not have had particularly easy circumstances. I believe I, I talked once about an individual. I think I heard the account third hand, but it was of a homeless man who the reason he was homeless is because he had escaped an abusive home and then just didn't have anything to fall back on. You know, think about like people in the foster system that like age out or the cycles of violence that often happen in homes. I mean, if that's you, if that's like what you're going through. I mean, I've been in some negative relationships where I mean, I'm a fairly physically capable individual, but I obviously never violent with a partner because it's dumb. I mean, it doesn't help that I, I saw my mother with an abusive boyfriend as a kid. Yeah, those, those cycles of negativity and violence, I would see it coming through the hospital all the time, like when I worked there and a little bit when I was working for the welfare office up here doing security there. You just see these cyclical instances of the negative behavior just being reinforced over and over again. Something has to break that cycle. I guess it's kind of a long roundabout way of saying, one, don't judge a book by its cover. Two, people are human and you don't know how they got to the situation they're at. And uh, you might be the light in that person's day actually dealt with an individual yesterday as I was driving back from lunch who pantomimed shooting me. <laughs> I don't think they realized I was security, uh, even though it says it in letters on my beanie. But, you know, um, like I, he was walking across traffic super slow, and then I pulled in to the parking lot because it just happened to be the one I was guarding. <laughs> he was just super angry. He went to one of the stores, came out, and I remember seeing this individual at other places. I've seen him in welfare office and the mental health facility i don't remember if i've seen him at the hospital or not. i might have but you know in security kind of especially if you jump around from job to job like i have or work for multiple companies like i have then you start to see these people's lives a little bit and kind of start picking up on a few things and this guy clearly has some kind of developmental thing going on obviously i can't diagnose and i wouldn't really know where to start but uh, he's got like kind of a limp and usually when i talk to him which it's been a while so i don't think he remembers me at all he has more of an upbeat voice and this time he just sounded so mad i think i think a guard may have actually slammed his finger in a dumpster it may not have been a guard i would hope a guard knows better because a lot of times like regular workers and stuff don't realize that uh, just things that i assume are common sense but you know what they say about common sense <laughs> yeah he was just so mad i almost thought about offering him the chicken sandwich i had which maybe i should have maybe it would have calmed him down made his day a little bit better but when i talked to him he was just so mad and i wasn't aggressive or anything even though he pantomimed murdering me essentially because you know if, you, if you're aggressive you're going to escalate the situation was i offended that he wanted to shoot me just because i was driving towards his direction uh, yeah, I have this whole I want to live thing or whatever. And I know from overhearing that at least, you know, a couple of years ago anyway, he had somebody that was collecting the, I think, Social Security money or whatever that he gets. And I think they hold on to it so he doesn't use drugs or something. But like, if dude is on the street scrounging through dumpsters to eat, I feel like whoever is getting the money isn't really doing the responsible thing and trying to make sure this guy's fed at the very least. I mean, it, maybe he's difficult to live with. I don't know. I've, I've seen people with, with mental health issues that are just a handful. So I'm not going to judge somebody based on their life situation, but at least make sure he's fed, you know, maybe 
check in once in a while. I don't know. Give him a shower. I don't want to say too many details about him, but I know his hair is like almost always dirty. So I'm, I'm thinking he's not really receiving the aid that he should. Yeah, that's definitely a roundabout way of saying <laughs> uh, don't judge a book by its cover because you don't know the situation that they're in. I mean, that guy can't hold a job down, right? Um, does he not deserve to live just because he's got a couple of issues and maybe he's difficult to be around? I don't know. Like I said, usually when I see him, he's happy. But So in summary, think about not only your Haminya and obviously the connections that we make that influence our Haminya, but also the luck of others may not have been that great in the beginning. Maybe that dickhead boss you've been dealing with at work just has a bad home life. You know, actually, Burger Creek uh, did a pretty interesting video on bullying. I'll put that in the description below because um, he talks a bit about you know his his home life and how that led to his protecting some people at school and bullying others. It's it's actually a really interesting video. Um, he talks about how nuanced that is. That definitely uh, affects you know, your luck and then who you become after school. You know, I was bullied. I was definitely a prick in my early 20s for sure. <laughs> I know there were worse people around. I wasn't completely terrible, but I uh, definitely made some poor decisions for some testosterone-fueled reasons. That's for damn sure. If you have any questions about the, uh, the name day ceremony, I will try to put a link in the description below of a couple of the ones I looked at uh, when we were putting it all together. And... So as per usual, my links in the description below. Hopefully this video wasn't too wordy. As you can see, I have my Clark Kent's back again. I had smashed them when an individual that mall security was dealing with came on our side of the place that I was guarding at the time. And while I had the guy, I was wrestling with him, um, trying to um, safe, safely get him to the ground as best I could uh, so that the other guards could put cuffs on him. I stomped on my glasses. <laughs> so that's why I haven't had glasses this whole time. I've been wearing contacts and sleeping in them. And oh my god, that was just a headache. Sometimes literally, it was nice to have my specs again. I had insurance that I paid like, they, they took like probably almost $1,200 out of my check. And I uh, saved $100 on these glasses. So hey, thanks insurance. <laughs> I don't understand why people like insurance. I I, I don't know. Fuck, man. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, my God. Couldn't make rent once because of it. Oh, jeez. And the eye care is only $33 a month. So, like, technically the eye care could have made sense, but we had, like, the best eye care. But the healthcare system, honestly, in, in Humboldt is terrible. If you were planning on moving in, into, this, into this area, um, just be forewarned. And all the specialists are not in the, not in this county. Um, people usually go to Reading or, or San Francisco or something. Good luck with dental. Oof. So yeah, Patreon subscribe star down there. If you feel like throwing me a bone, my subscriber count is consistently going up. My time is consistently going down. My my free time is consistently going down. So that helps out a lot. Um, I also have a Teespring and Redbubble if you're unaware. Which you probably are if you watch my videos. Um, yeah, just because that, I don't know, it gives you an actual product, and I'm not in any position to be able to get people stuff for the Patreon and subscribe star. I don't really give a shit about getting stuff for Patreon, so I don't know, like, if, if anybody's interested in thinking about doing wood carvings or something, do it out to people. I think I might have mentioned that a couple of times. So all that being said, uh, be better tomorrow than you were yesterday. We are the sum of our actions. Skull.